Good afternoon, I'm Zahir Abbas. I'm a physician yeah. associate trainee in the Anal Shippa. Can I confirm your full name and date of birth? Please? Yeah, it's Benito Baldini, uh, 9th of January 1998. How would you like, pleasure to meet you, Benito. How would you like for me to address you? Uh, Benny will be fine. Wonderful. Benny, uh, how old are you now, please? 23. Wonderful. And you have been asked to carry, conduct a cardiovascular examination on you. Okay. What that means is I'm going to be listening to your heart as well as feeling around the chest and your pulses. There are a few other components to the whole examination. Yeah. Uh, I will talk this through as we go along. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. Wonderful. As part of the examination, I will need you to remove your upper garment. Okay. And for which reason I will have a chaperone in the room. And uh, if at any point you want me to stop, don't hesitate to say, and we'll absolutely take it from there. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. If you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Thank you. Mind you do that, I'll slip around. Just have a lay down on your back if you would please, Benny. Okay. Are you warm enough? Are you comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Now, ignore me now if you will please, Benny. I'm going to speak for the sake of the camera. Okay, no problem. So, for the end of that examination, looking at clinical paraphernalia, the oxygen masks, ECG machine, telemetry, any ECG leads or labels on the patient, and the patient themselves. Um, are they looking well? Uh, do they have a GTN spare on any medications that might be cardiovascular implications? Are there, are there any scars on the frontal aspect of the chest, down the centre, indicative of a cabbage, or in the left submammary region, indicative of a wellectomy? Benny, for my task, just bring your hands together, your fingers together like so for me, please. Yeah, good, thank you very much. Any pain or discomfort in your hands or your uh, arms? No, just going to squeeze it for your finger, if I may. Give a tap of two seconds there. And I'll start staining on the hands. Good, and just turn the hands over. They're well perfused. No genuine lesions or osseous nodes. There are no signs of any IV needle trap marks on the anterior cubital fossae. Good. And then looking at the face itself, no, no xanthalasma, no angular stromatitis, no main last sure and edema. And if I can ask you to just lower, lower your eyelids for me, please, sir, and look up. That's good, and, and relax. And give me a big ah, uh, push up uh, your tongue. Uh, That's wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. There's good oral hygiene, no indications of any um, uh, oral ulcers. The tongue is well perfused, it's not overly red or beef steak. And just turn your lips out for me, please, if you will. And thank you. The gingival and the buccal membranes are, are not pallid, nor is the conjunctival palpebrae. Lovely. Uh, Benito, I'm just going to now take a puff if I may. Yes, yeah. stay as you want, nice and relaxed. Thank you very much. So we have a pulse rate of 76 beats per minute in normal sinus rhythm with normal character and good volume. And I'm going to test both your pulses. There are no signs of radio, 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 radio delay indicated of aortic coaptation. Any, any pain in your shoulder? No. I'm just going to raise your hand above your arm above your head. Is that okay? No problem. And there is no presence of Corrigan's pulse indicative of, of what our pulse, also known as indicative of aortic regurgitation. At this point, I will reposition the patient to 30 degrees, anywhere between 45 and 30 degrees, and ask the patient to look to the left. I'm now assessing the JVDP, the jugular venous pressure. I'm expecting the pulsations to be biphasic and for them to be present between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid master muscle. The biphasic pulsations are in comparison to the uniphasic as found in the carotid arteries. The pulsations I would expect to be two to four centimeters above the angle of Louis, which is also otherwise known anatomically as the manubrio sternal angle. The JVP is a direct indication of the pressure, a direct pressure of the right atrium. If it was warranted and I couldn't see it in that position, I'd explain, I'd explain, it's quite possible the patient was dehydrated or otherwise in a state of hypovolemia. I would in, in, induce the hepatojugular reflux. Any, any questions? No. Okay. Okay. I'm now going to feel for your heart, if that's okay. That's I'm going to run my hand down, your, down the front of the chest. Is that okay? okay. Lovely. Again, any pain or discomfort, just sit. 
the manubrium, manubrium sternal angle, second, third, fourth, fifth intercostal space on the left sternal edge, and this will the region. Can't feel the apex beat, just roll over to that side if you want to vomit the Wonderful, thank you very much, and you can come back there. And the apex beat was possible. Come in here. There were no heaves and thrills on any of the valvula regions. Any nothing to listen to your heart if that's okay? Yeah, that's fine. I do apologise, the step might be a little bit cold. <laughs> no problem. Lovely. Thank you. That was the mitral valve, the tricuspid, the aortic, and the pulmonary. The mitral in the fifth intercostal space, left uh, midclavicular line. The tricuspid on the fourth intercostal space, left sternal edge. The aortic valve, second intercostal space, right sternal edge. And the pulmonary valve, second intercostal space, left sternal edge. Wonderful. Ben, can I ask you to sit up for me, please? And I'm going to listen once more to a couple of the areas. I might ask you to give me a big deep breath in, breathe all the way out and hold. And relax, breathe as normal. And I'm going to do the same thing once more if I might. Whenever you're ready, big deep breath in, breathe all the way out and hold. And breathe as normal. And breathe in and just hold. And breathe as normal. Just going to listen to the back of your lungs if I may. No, that's fine. Big deep breath in and out. Big deep breath. Yeah. And hold. Wonderful. Any pain in your lower back at all? No. Did that feel around that, in that area? Wonderful. And have lay down. Thank you. And any pain in your shins at all? Uh, no, they're fine. Don't mind me just having a that's fine. look if I may and a feel in there. That's, okay. yeah, that's perfect, thank you. Lovely. That's grand. Thank you, Benny. Um, that was going to say for the edema. Uh, there was good uh, air entry bilaterally in the base of the lungs, and there were no signs of uh, circular edema, nor were there any trophic changes in the lower extremities. Any of that voice in the video I've mentioned? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can now get dressed if you want, and I'll present my findings to the camera. Thank you, sir. Just leave me alone. Oh, sorry. And what we, no, it's okay. Um, this was uh, an otherwise unremarkable cardiovascular examination in 23-year-old Benny, who came in not complaining of any issues whatsoever. On auscultation, there were no added heart sounds. S1, S2 heart sounds were normal, and, and, and there were dual sounds. Uh, as I suggested, there was good air entry bilateral at the base of the lungs, and there were no signs of pedal edema. Uh, in terms of further investigations, were there to have been some symptoms or otherwise some clinical findings, I'd be looking to conduct some blood tests, predominantly a full blood count, as well as INR, BMP, and trunk T's were, that, were they to be warranted. I'd conduct an ECG to have a look for any uh, cardiac arrhythmias or otherwise, as well as uh, an echocardiograph to look for the structural uh, integrity of the heart, any valvular disease, or any more neural thrombi that might be formation forming in the background. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Zaya. Yep. Okay. Come on now.